no, honestly, it was. You can check. The 14th of... Redacted. 19... Redacted. The Atlantic was piteous and grim. Rolling waves crashed down... Oh, Petronella, do stop your bordering. Where was I? Oh, yes. The spirit of Glyndua was suffering, taking on water. We can only imagine what was going through the crew's mind as their ship reeled from the merciless beating of the storm. That's when we got involved. UNIT, the Unified Intelligence Task Force. Well, of course, not me personally, obviously. I mean, I wasn't born until 19... Redacted. But they sent out a crack military team led by RSM Benton. With them were representatives of the Cosmic Earth Society, namely an old friend of Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, zoologist professor Charlie Guarneri, who UNIT had co-opted for help in matters dealing with exobiology when the doctor wasn't around and former unit captain Mike Yates, who later detailed the events. Seventeenth of... Redacted. Nineteen... Redacted. My life outside unit always seems to bring me back in the strangest ways. The peculiar nature of the sinking of the Glendua had the Brigadier request our assistance. Charlie Guarneri and I, plus a troop led by my old sergeant, Benton, were called in to investigate. As luck would have it, the doctor was dropping Miss Smith off for a family engagement. So he came too.
the Doctor teased Charlie with further tales of our various encounters. Some he was already privy to, some that even though I was party to, I still find incredible. The Doctor was interrupted by... Oh, that day went down. Well, we didn't have many wins, but that was one of them. The doctor cleared the obstruction, but I could see he wasn't happy about this turn of events. He lost his usual benevolent smile and gazed at Benton in the way I have seen him when he takes on tyrants and troublemakers. It's unsettling, I can tell you. Mr. Benton, he began, not breaking his gaze. I am beginning to think our friend the Brigadier has not been entirely straight with me. Could that be why he sent you rather than come himself? Huh? I wanted to help, but I had myself suspected there was something more going on. That old military instinct. I let the doctor carry on uninterrupted. This ship, it wasn't just some unfortunate fishing vessel, was it? There is far more to this story than you have told me. I refuse to help any further until I get some satisfactory answers. The Brigadier always told me, Mike, if in doubt, when dealing with the doctor, always tell the truth unless you have another option. Right now I saw poor Benton had none. And that's where I come in. Well, okay, yes, a few years later, obviously. Decades, actually. Anyway, digressing. The unit had a base on Flatholm that mysteriously ceased communication. And as I remembered the old case, photographic memory, it's a bit of a pain sometimes, I suggested we investigate. 
Leading the mission was unit head honcho Kate Stewart. It turned out Professor Guineri was a family friend, Uncle Charlie, who she remembered as a young girl. But she never found out what happened to him. Was I to be the one who told her? Sorry, didn't mean to throw in some kind of dramatic foreshadowing there. You'll see soon enough. With the aid of Sergeant Gab and Corporal Chapman, we hauled Kate back on the motor launch. I asked her what had hit her. In her hand, she held up a fish with glowing mechanical teeth. This feisty beggar, she said, as soon as she got her breath back. Before I could do an analysis, we were besieged by them, flying fish from all directions. There's no such thing as too clever, is there? It was awful. Brendan and Howell were good men. Didn't deserve to be taken like that. The situation was obviously deeply serious and far more dangerous than we could have imagined. There was something very wrong here. Maybe something even worse than what happened before. on flat home. We made landfall on the island. Everything eerily quiet, though we could feel a storm approaching. Charlie was the first to speak. He beamed that generous, if slightly unsettling smile of his. He turned to Charlie, grinning. Are you ready? For a second, Charlie looked baffled, then matched the doctor's smile. I had to admit, I was confused and said so. The doctor and Charlie were looking pleased, having made this connection. We entered the lighthouse, the doctor reasoning that from its top we could survey the whole island. Benton stationed two of his men at the base, and we climbed up the spiral steps to the top.
amazing. I haven't seen a move like that since the 1957 Martian invasion. It was like the old days with the old doctor. A hard-won victory. Eventually, the doctor's sonic screwdriver was able to scramble the electronic circuits on the birds. They either fled or got shot. We thought we had a minute's peace. But then we heard a loud crash and scream from the base of the lighthouse. We raced down the stairs, only to find the two guards we left below dead. It was a vicious killing, and for a second he took our breath away. I was impressed with Benton and how he took command of the situation. I'd always thought he'd make a damn fine officer one day. Just like the Doctor. Number four, I think. It's sometimes hard to keep them straight as they... I mean, he doesn't turn up in the correct order all the time. <laughs> I'll have to tell you about the time the tall one with Heathcliff hair and an Oscar Wilde coat came and... Oh, sorry, digressing again. But yes, please do ask me. That was amazing. Anyway, yes, Flatholm. We reached Flatholm Island. No signal from our base there. The remaining soldiers, obviously keen to do something about the situation that had cost their brothers in arms their lives, leapt into action, even though I tried to caution them. Guys, let us do a sensor sweep first. But they didn't listen. I should have been more forceful. I really should. Kate yelled, listen to your scientific advisor, men, and they snapped to attention. That's why she's the boss. My scanner was picking up anomalous readings. Even if our guys weren't active, something certainly was. Gab was the first to notice the glowing in the ferns. We all looked. It was small. And when it got closer, we realised... I caught myself when I realised I'd used a less than scientific term. Oryctologus, domestic rabbit, I corrected. But no one was noticing, as we were suddenly aware that many of the island's smaller creatures were beginning to gather around us. And they all had an unearthly glow. I looked around, fallen roof, broken windows. It had seen better days. It didn't immediately scream threat to me. But maybe those military instincts had become dulled with time after all. It turned out I was not alone, though.
We'd reached the cholera hospital, as I'd remembered from Mike Yates's files. But it wasn't how we found it. It wasn't anything like that. In the corridors below the long abandoned hospital, we followed the doctor, his sonic screwdriver picking up all kinds of weird signals. Anything yet, doctor? I asked, while Benton and his troops examined our surroundings. Nothing specific yet, Mike. There do appear to be life forms down here. Can't fully discern their nature. Something is interfering. The doctor was cut off as a door blasted open and out leapt a half machine hellhound. hard one but we were aware harder awaited us the doctor was gentle in dealing with the dog even though it had attacked us it wasn't acting under its own control there is something down here something alien said the doctor Guarneri agreed. These cables they feed into the frontal lobes, making that poor animal a puppet. I had suffered from mind control in the past, so my thoughts were with this poor creature that couldn't help itself. I sensed, though, that there was even more going on. The expression of concern on the doctor's face confirmed that. As the doctor spoke, the doors ahead of us burst open, and towards us loomed Cybermen. The Cybermen, those faceless, formerly human creatures who crossed space and time to make everything like they are. Unlike the Daleks, who just sought to destroy, the Cybermen were in some ways a far more inclusive race. They were more than happy to let you live, if you didn't mind losing all the things that made you, you. This wasn't in the report, was it, Osgood? Asked Kate, looking around our location. Nope, I agreed. This should all be gone. Long gone. Kate is amazing. She absorbed all this and, without blinking, had strategized the situation. She raised her gun in readiness. 
Men, we know what's coming then. You're well prepared for whatever's through those doors ahead. The double doors smashed open, and through them came... The battle was swift and brutal. Even though these weren't fully transformed Cybermen, they gave our boys a real fight. We lost good men. In the end, it was just the Doctor, Charlie, Benton, Corporal Reynolds, and me who were left. And we weren't done with the cyber threat yet. We were led into the control room. must once have been a ward in the hospital. But now it was a random mess of medical equipment and Cyberman technology. We need to secure this location, yelled the doctor, naturally falling into the commander role he always says he hates. The Cybermen left us alone now. Their only aim had been to secure us in this location, and they'd done that. They wandered, a bit lost, awaiting orders. The doctor directed us to collect various bits of equipment in the room to build a device to blow this den to kingdom. This place is part of a crashed Cybermen spacecraft. Obviously the crew perished, so there's no cyber controller. It's been operating on automated systems, probably for decades. The approach of fishing vessels and local technology must have stirred it up. And this, uh, he gestured wide, indicating the American weapons, has awoken it. It's why there was so little wreckage. It's absorbed as much of the ship as it can. We must destroy this base before it becomes sentient, feeding on the poor crew from the military vessel. It all moved quickly now. Charlie had assembled the device, but the creature that must have dragged the ship down erupted from the pool and smashed him against the wall. I managed to catch the device, but the doctor found releasing him from the wall was impossible. I... I can't get these cables off you! They're weaving and integrating with your flesh. He apologized, all the time trying to use the sonic screwdriver to free Charlie. Charlie tried to shake his head. No, it's too late for me. My body was shattered when I hit the wall. I don't have long, but what a thing. A cyber cracker. I lived to see that. Mentally holding back the Cybermen here, so you can escape before I detonate the device. The radioactive elements, I protested. 
Won't there be fallout? Charlie looked in pain. I can't contain them. The cyber vessel is designed to shield the core. I can make that work here. Mike Yates was wrong. Oh, so very wrong. hit the cyber rhino, blasting a connection between the circuits and the rhino brain. The animal was no longer being controlled and crashed down. I really thought we'd have a moment to breathe. Unfortunately, the whole cyber zoo attacked. We got a hit, but we knew we had to keep going. As the guys were taking out the cyber spiders, I tried to find a side way through. I was alarmed. How could the base be running? How could these animals possibly be converted? What Mike Yates and the Doctor had done should have stopped this threat decades ago. I had an idea, and it wasn't a great one, and it wasn't one that I wanted to share with Kate in case I was wrong, or worse, that I was right. I thought there was no cyber controller. The base was just acting on automatic when they came last time she asked. And then the door opened once more. And my worst fears came true. You belong to us. You shall be like us. Upgraded.
I was only vaguely aware of this conversation as I started to slip into the shared cyber consciousness. And there I saw the whole story. A battle-scarred Cyberman vessel, last of a war fleet, now lost in time and space, flew into a meeting storm that caused near-fatal damage. The last remaining crewmen, seeking some evidence of technological life, coming across the signal sent from here by Marconi, desperately hoping to rebuild itself, but having to lie dormant until technology caught up with it. The technological advances of the 70s stirred the operating system and it extended its tendrils into the island itself, where it established its base and outwards to assimilate local sea life to serve it and capture resources. The radioactive emanations from the Glyndua awoke the core systems and it began assimilating again. If Mike Yates, the Doctor, and Professor Guineri hadn't stopped it, it would have... Gab was so sweet. I guess he'd seen enough strangeness around Unit, either with or without the Doctor there, to accept my momentary rant about being saved. As Miss Stewart is temporarily inconvenienced, I guess you're next in charge, Miss, said Gab. So what's our strategy? I gulped. I wasn't used to the idea of making life-or-death judgments. I was more the backroom boffin type, but needs must. Those tanks were the torpedoes. He looked confused. I realised I was being too sciencey again. The manta rays, they're called torpedoes, sorry. We need to tip the tanks, send them against the Cybermen. They're electric, and I'm betting the cyber enhancements have increased that ability. Get your men to set them free. <laughs> if I had a hat, I'd... <laughs> It was a real challenge, and it's been met. Pretty swiftly, we'd stunned the Cybermen. I ran over to Kate, who still stood before the oddly immobile Cyber Controller. They wouldn't stay down for long. I knew I had to go through with my insane plan quickly. No chance of that. The Cyber Rhino had revived and attacked again. <laughs> Quick breather, then move on. I had to think fast, and then realised that the patterning I had noticed on the far wall wasn't decorative. I realised that the Cyberkraken, as Mike Yates had called it, that attacked the Glyndua had perished decades past, but the Cyber elements had been merged with the wall. A system missing a controlling intelligence, and then I knew what I had to do. Using my link to the cyber system, I was able to take control of the cyber kraken and use it to fight back. Quick 
breather, then move on. Overriding the cyber system, I'd been able to defeat the zoo they threw at us. I looked across to Kate, who still stood before the oddly immobile cyber controller. They wouldn't stay down for long. I knew I had to go through with my insane plan quickly. I knew I had to tell her what I'd suspected all along, but I guessed she wasn't going to like it. Controller, I saved my base when the explosion. I saved. I caused. I reached into my lab coat, pulled out the weapon I'd brought along in case of something like this. Kate looked surprised. I shrugged, bold overarm and it exploded by his head. It's an EMP grenade, I explained. In the past, they've temporarily knocked out the Cybermen's emotional inhibitors. On the off chance it was your uncle in there, I thought it worth bringing. <laughs> uncle Charlie. Even though she was a battle-hardened veteran of so many conflicts, in that second, I saw Kate Stewart as the little girl she'd been. I tried, Kate. I controlled the explosion, stopped radiation leaking out, but I wasn't strong enough. I didn't understand the system. It contained the explosion, saved the base, but went into hibernation mode again. When unit... When unit built their base above, when the internet came to... But home, I woke once more. The systems plundered my memories, my sensibilities. It decided that the animal world was ready for cyberization too. It took my knowledge of zoology and used it to reach out under the sea, taking down vessels with animals, taking predators from the sea and land to build a vast cyber force to seize the planet. The tendrils of this base are vast and wide-reaching. I was in here, seeing all this helpless. I looked around, saw the stunned Cybermen starting to rise. We didn't have long. Mom, I said, trying to focus. We don't have long. You need to keep talking to him. Help him keep hold of that thread of humanity. Kate looked up at this giant figure, I guess trying to picture her loving uncle from so many summers ago. She said, Uncle Charlie, try and hang on. This isn't you. You love animals. Their well-being was your life. You would never want to see them perverted like this, turned into murder machines. The Cyber Commander staggered back, slumping on an elaborate, big chair, throne, I guess. He reached down, a section of the chair opening out, and a clumsy, awkward, and shoddily put together device that I knew, by instinct, had been designed by the Doctor, slid out. The auto destruct, I remembered, was able to recreate. This time I will know how to destroy it all before the cyber controller takes me over again. We knew it was time to leave, and fast. Kate turned, gave her old family friend one last nod. The cyber controller nodded back. I'm ready.
Don't you think you should have warned me, Petronella? I just looked at her. What, you mean? By the way, ma'am, there's the outside chance that the lost unit base may be the result of your old family friend having become a cyber controller bent on world domination. I know I'm prone to finding worst case scenarios, but I had hoped to spare you that. She smiled. No wonder you like the Doctor so much. You're so very, very alike. I blushed as she hugged me. <laughs> 